um, on the second group of people, the ground that is rocky. And then what I said earlier is that the four groups of people, the four groups of people represent four grounds, right? So he said the wayside, the rock, the stones, and the good ground. Hallelujah. Now, last week I spoke about um, what it means. I said they did not have the good foundation. So let's go to Matthew 13, 3 to 6. Matthew 13, 3 to 6. He said, Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. We've, we've dealt with that already. But when the sun came up, the plant was scorched and they withered because they had no root. Matthew 13, 20 to 21. The seed falling on a rocky ground referred to someone who hears the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they had no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. So the major problem of the second group of people is they don't have roots. Their root is shallow. One, because the ground does not allow them to have enough soil. Number two, because of the soil, they don't get deep roots. And that is, so I'm going to explain, we are going to exploit that. Hallelujah. So the meaning of the root is the one who has but a superficial experience of divine truth. Because the word, the seed, Bible said, represents the word of the kingdom. Please, I hope you remember that. Yes. So those who are on the rocky ground... The reason why the seed, the mandate, the thing God wants to do in their life could not materialize is because they have less experience of divine truth, superficial. You know, there are people who are armchair people. They know little about things, and then they talk a lot. You, you, you get the adults, people are there, armchair chemists, armchair strategists, armchair management people. They are there. They know little it's the same way if you become a Christian and what you know is very little, you do not benefit enough from God. You see, God, what God wants to do in your life, your mind cannot understand. It is far above. So deep. God, he said, the plans that I have for you is to prosper you. First of all, he's willing to do it. He said, I'm, God is not going to re withhold anything good from you. A Christian must settle that. That once you become a Christian, God has a positive mind about you. In God, the Bible said there is no darkness. He said there is no shadow of turning or invariableness in God. There is, if anybody tells you God wants to teach you a lesson by letting you have an accident, it's not true. And God wants to punish you, wants you to be a good person. That's why it will hurt the money from you. No. God doesn't work that way. He is willing to give you, but the ground must be prepared to accept it. And do you know from this parable, from this parable, it means that the sower kept sowing, he kept throwing. So irrespective of their preparation, he kept doing what? Throwing it. There are many Christians. The problem of Christianity is we have about 90% of Christians who know little, if you ask them what is grace, they don't know. You see, and they start sharing their opinions. And I think grace is uh, when you sin, the unmerited favor, you get some no scripture. They ask, what is faith? And I think faith, uh, when you are able to take something by force. You know, people have ideas, and that is what we call the difference between opinion and something that is true, opinion is some, a belief you hold without fact. And but that is not how God wants us to live our lives. He wants you to go deeper. Hallelujah. He wants you to go deeper as possible. Every successful or non-successful outcome has its source. 
So there's, that's why I said that the seed that fell among the rocks, because the soil was shallow, its roots could not go deep. So during persecution, you see, it withered away. The success of that seed depended on its roots. So that's what he's saying. So every success, anybody you have seen that was successful, they have a secret. They have something that is causing them to be what? Successful. Anybody. Don't look at somebody and say, oh, this thing I can just emulate. No. No, 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 no. You will do the same thing and you will fail. Because they have roots. Every successful business have a reason why they succeed. When you see the banks, some people are behind it. That is causing it to what? To succeed. As we sit here, some of you, the reason why you are where you are is because of your family backgrounds. Isn't it also? Eh? When you go to school, you don't think about fees because of your roots. So when you see people out there doing something, it is because of the success of a Christian depends on his roots. You see, the mindset, when you meet people and they are talking, it can tell you where the person is coming from. Which church, which school, which community, you will know. So it is very important. Everything has a source from which it is growing. Everything has a source from which it is growing. Anything that is happening in your life, is, something is the substrate which it is feeding on to grow. You see, your happiness is coming out of somewhere. That's why the Bible said the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So it is not the food we eat that makes us happy. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's not parties. Oh, let, let me go to a club. I'll be happy. Let me go and watch a movie. I'll be happy. Let me do this. I'll be happy. No, no, no. It has a root. If you have not dealt with the root cause, it can't make any progress. So that's what the Bible said. That the kingdom of God, it's not about food and drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You find righteousness, peace, and joy. Your socks, to find it, your socks is the word. The Holy Ghost as a Christian. Muslims have this. The Buddhists have this. Some people will say chant. Close your eyes and meditate. Ours is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Your, less, your forgetfulness has a source. Many of the students I have thought, you wonder why they forget things. It is not because they are dumb. It has a source. If you trace the source, you see that where he is in the class, then he will remember something. The reason the person is not grasping it. You see, that's why don't let anybody write you off. You have to identify the source. Your boldness has a source. Anybody you see is bold, has a source. When David said, although I walk through the valleys and shadows of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they do what? They comfort me. That is his source. He said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not what? Want that is his source. When a Christian is threatened, he is worried, he is anxious, he doesn't understand his source. Have you seen a child whose parents are rich and he's worried about fees? So boldness, their courage, courage has a source. And the reason I'm preaching this is that you see, most of us are failing in life, it's not because the circumstances is overwhelming us, it's because of the source. Bible says in the times of adversity. If you faint, your strength is small. It's not, the, it's not the adversity. If you are writing exams and you fail, it is not the exams. Exams, in the end, you don't know. Why did somebody pass? It's not the exams. It is you. And it gives you another advantage. You know, it's not all fail. You see, when you fail, don't worry. Because when you fail and you do it again, it gives you opportunity to know how you failed. That somebody who didn't fail didn't know. Psalm 1, 2, and 3 said, His delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates on it day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. So he's telling us, letting us know that 
that person has a source. That is all he's telling us. Your measure is based on the source. Your measure. You know, many people, when they want to do business, quickly they want to make profit. No, that's not how it works. When you start a business, you have to think of routine. You have to think of foundation. Certain system. Certain structures. Widening, scaling. It's part of business growth. So that you have roots. If you are doing business, or you are building, and that's why in life, Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. No, you get look. He says because you need to get the root first. When you get the root, you will prosper. Someone he said he prospers in each season. He prospers in everything he does. Do you think it's easy to collapse backless? Oh, look. If they you see some things they come and they just move room, you accuse the person. It won't go anywhere, but they have roots, connections. America, Britain is almost a thousand years. Do you think it's easy to collapse them with coronavirus? You saw the difference. Coronavirus, we, didn't, we were not hit like them, but who survived? No, look at the dollar in the city to tell you. So if you don't have roots in what you are, don't be working like a, a somebody in autopilot. You are going like that. No, no. A Christian, you don't have to do that. You have to strategically have roots in economics. When I say economic money, have roots. Don't be there one and two and then when you're tired. That's why I told you the other time. Somebody who receives 500 CD every month, he is more worth, his worth is higher than when you go and do one and two and then you get 5,000 and then you, oh, you know I'm rich. When that money finish, you are gone. You have to do one and two and say again, maybe it will take you 10 years. So root is at least how many of you understand what I'm saying? Now let's look at what Martin Luther said. Martin Luther said that the ultimate measure of a man is not in the moment of comfort. And when I have everything there, my boy. You know, I've seen people when they have thousands, then they are macho in the neighborhood. Then they move one, they take, they take girls everywhere. <laughs> they say they are one time. When it finishes, they come to zero one. It is not that that shows you are powerful. That's not how we measure people. Don't think that if you're a Christian, you won't sit in a car one day for the car to... You see, a car can have a problem. Don't think that me nothing wrong. No, that's not true. The evil, it can come. Coronavirus, they did exempt Christians. No. But he's saying that when the storm came, the one who built his house on the rock was able to stand the test of time. Would you be able to stand the test of time when things happen? That's a question you should ask yourself. This thing that I'm doing, can I stand a test of time? Can I stand? If today, 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 they come and they say, oh, I, we are querying you. We are going to look into you. People come against you. You ask. Ask all churches, whatever. Jesus, they came against him. So the ultimate measure is not in moment of comfort, but a moment of what? Controversies. So trial tests our foundation, not the ecstatics. When I say aesthetic, it's not the beauty. It tests your foundation. I've seen many people who have very beautiful cars. But when the car sport, they couldn't do anything. You see, it has tested them. It's not the aesthetics. Bible said, beauty is in vain. Charming is deceptive. But the woman that fear God, she will be praised. Beauty is deceptive. So aesthetics can be very deceptive. But the foundation, build the foundation and let it be beautiful and add aesthetics to it. You don't live your life with aesthetics. I have to go and you polish your face, you do everything. No, 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 no. When they will come and test you one day, and they say, ah, that is why you have to avail yourself for quality training. Now, when you go to school, you want shortcut. You see, saw a course, they say, oh, one day MBA. <laughs> MBA. Then you come for it, I'm an MBA. They will test you. The behavior of anything depends on how it has been programmed. We all have. Me, I've done things. Immediately I did them. I said, no, this one, the Enema 441. Cry. All of us. That is why the church, you see, Every institution has its purpose. The church is to help you transform your life. That's the purpose of the church. 
teach you the word of God so that we will delete. He said, be transformed by word. Renew. Up. I have checked all the assumptions of human resource development because I used to teach it. Is this year I didn't teach. I've thought it for over four years. And all the assumptions I saw, I saw any institution that has to train people has to be structured in a particular way. Either than that, the people won't grow. That is why we're doing discipleship program. We are doing this because we understand that we have to transform people's lives. So when we are doing it, avail yourself to be what? Trained. Or else we can't undo what is making you fail. So James said, let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he himself tempt anyone. Now you are clear. When something is happening, your Lord says, God is punishing me. No, no, God doesn't do that. He's saying that, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by whose? His own what? Desire and enticed. Your own desire has drawn you into the thing. And that is why I want to kill it. And the way it works, eh? Hey, desire powerful. is very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. And people have sat and have studied it. Do you know why when they were doing, they do commercial, they put nude here, nude there. Why? Because they know people's desire. It will take you fast, 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 fast. No, no, it's true. Hmm. So if we don't help you to manage it, 60, 60 to 70% of traffic on the internet is pornography. And 80% are men. Men have that problem. Women have three problems. Oh yes, and people have studied it and have developed industries from it. America, their economy, 60% is because of women. So, if you don't deal with that route, we will make money of you. I'm not part, but they will make money of you. <laughs> then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when it's full grown, bring forth the everything has a root. Go to the next slide quickly. The root of every problem and solution is found in us. Not the external. That is why he said, the ultimate measure of a man, it's you. In the time of adversity, if you faint, your strength is what? So your capacity mean method. Mm? Job 19, 28 to 29. If you should say, how shall we persecute him? Since the root of the matter is found in who? In me. In me. The root of the... The problem you are having in the marriage, it's not your spouse. The root, check. Your poverty is not government. It's in you. Because if I'm poor, and I say it's the economy, the reason is the economy, then other people are successful in the economy, which means the meaning, the reason I'm poor, is not the economy. You, you get what I'm saying? It means it is not so. So then you have to sit down and look at it. So, okay, what is the problem? It is not that. So you do what? You deal with it. Quickly. You see, fail, that's what I'm saying. When you fail in something, don't worry. Go and check the root cause. Deal with this so your success becomes more significant than your failure. When it happens that way, everybody will say, oh, your failure becomes what? A testimony. Isn't it also? Sometimes we are the problem to what is happening in our lives. We are the problem. When you are able to solve that problem, some, I know somebody who has changed job 12, so it means every month he changed one. Somebody said, oh, he knows one student of mine, the guy was looking for a job and said, we should, and I said, this guy, if you give him a job, he won't succeed. So I said, I have watched him. He doesn't stay on something for long. You see, Richards have shown that if you are doing something, you've not done it for five years. Unless you have received enough counsel to see the thing won't work. If you've not done the thing for five years, you can't rule it out that the thing is not good. 
problem with a lot of young people is that they don't do the thing for a long time. They do it short. One person, you've done 27 things. Do you jump from here, go here, go here. No, no, no. Because you have to be on the thing to learn. Because the thing has its craftiness. So you learn, you learn, you learn. This thing beat you here. You do this, you get it wrong. Then you are learning. You are learning. You are learning. And then you are improving. You don't run away from it. Anything you start, if you move to a place, there are things that become asset to you. Social capital is part. It takes a long time to build that. It takes a long time to build a social capital. It is not something that is built in a day. How many of you, when we went to the university, you knew a lot of people? By now, by fourth year, your phone number is 1,000. You now know a lot of people. You learn social capital. And also, ability to adapt in that circumstance, you are now learning it. So when you move, why am I not So it is very important you stay on something for what? For a long time. Survival of anything depends on your roots. Survival of anything depends on your what? Say with me, survival of anything depends on your roots. Psalm 11 verse 3. He says that when the foundation are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? That's what I'm stressing on. Look, build foundation. If you are a Christian and you have not built your foundation in God, you are deceiving yourself. You won't grow. Your root is too shallow. Sooner you'll be an atheist. No, it's true. No, these things, they don't buy it's true. He said, when the foundation being destroyed, what would the righteous do? What would you do? Look, it's the same principle that applies to wealth. When you say, go to school, people don't understand. Hey, every business in this world can collapse. Because organizations are human entities. A product of human, and it is humans who destroy the decisions of man. So don't use business to replace personal development. If everything is destroyed and the organization is no more, you, you can survive. How many of you know Nokia has come down? The great Nokia. Do you know big, big companies have collapsed? Do you think that people have died, died with it? No. Those who had developed themselves so moved on. Root. Every, if your foundation be destroyed, what would the what? Righteous do. May God give you a solid foundation. If anything happened to a Christian, you lose your money, you lose your car, you lose anything, whatever it is. Do you know the Bible says there's hope for you? Do you know where the hope will come from? Is your root. You see, God is more interested in you growing in the Lord than anything you achieve. Because he knows that one day you can lose it. Mm -hmm.